everybody. Um, right, today we are going to go through one of my favourite all-time images. This was captured, a little bit of a backstory, this was captured one night, I wasn't going to go out shooting, I got a phone call off one of my friends to say he was at the beach. Um, I went down with the camera, it was pouring it in rain, it didn't look like it was going to develop to anything, and then uh, this rainbow appeared at sunset. Um, the final image has already edited and it's been sent for print. Um, this was a few years ago, I think it was 2016. Um, so this has been hanging in a few galleries since. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start and we're going to show you how to pull this rainbow back and to get everything looking right. You can see I've done a bit of sensor cleaning up before I've started just so you don't have to watch that. Um, so we're going to start with the normal. So we'll click these two. If you haven't watched my other videos I'll go into depth about those but basically gets rid of the barrel distortion. Then we're going to come up. First of all, I want to balance the sky and the foreground. So we're going to press the graduation filter. <clears throat> we're going to drag down here. Quite a harsh line, so you don't want to affect the foreground. So if we pull it up here, again, previous videos go more into graduation filters. I've got a whole video on one of them. Um, in fact, what we're going to do to start with, we're going to press the crop tool, hold control and drag along the horizon so I can see it's not straight. So now we have a straight horizon. Graduation filter, as I've just said, pull down so it's nice and hard through that line there. We're going to tone this down so we're going to pull the exposure down on the sky so it matches the foreground a little bit better. So what this will do there. Now we have two fairly even exposures, the sky and the foreground. Um, what I will do, I will create a virtual copy of this image and I will reset so you can see, ignore the sensor dust. So, so far, the sky has just been toned down a bit. Darken those exposures down through the sky so it matches the foreground. Didn't have grad filters on. The main reason being is there was a lot of rain. It rained a hell of a lot that night, so I didn't want to have to sit and clean all the filters off for the next two hours. Shadows, we're going to pop this up so that we've got no clipping through these rocks, or not a lot through these rocks. Um, that leaves there nice and central image. Now some contrast, some clarity, and a little bit of dehaze to pull all those colours back. Losing a tiny bit of data through here, but you can see in the histogram we're not actually losing any. So what we've done there in less than a couple of minutes is we just those colours back. If you're ever stuck with rain, if you're using a polarizer in your photograph, if you don't use a polarizer, you can pull a lot back with the can't cut through water. Um, I mean, with a polarizing filter, you can obviously cut through water and you can make underneath the water visible. Um, but you can pull back your colors like a graduation filter would do for you. Like the sensor dust, it wasn't necessary. There was a lot of water kicking in the lens, there was all sorts. The, it took me over three hours to clean this off, uh, ready for print. Um, I'm not doing that now, I'm just coming in and getting rid of the worst of it, so that when we look at this final image, it doesn't look terrible. <coughs> so that's how I'd start with the base, um, base of the edit, that's a big one, or the base of the edit. <coughs> um, what I'm going to do then is come into, I see a new one every time I click away. What I'm going to do now is colour correct. I'm going to do my sky and my foreground totally separate, um, purely because they've got so much colour here that needs filling out. So I'm going to do the same again, make another grad that's very similar. So hold shift click. <coughs> I'm not going to adjust the exposure this time. Then we're going to add some orange and some purple, and, uh, some magenta into this side. So it was sunset when I shot this. The sun's off to the left hand side of the frame. So the sun coming in here and really pumping some colours. 
<coughs> so we want to get those back out as we have there. So between the two, we've got that. So that if we turn the grad filters off, that's what we've done with grad filters so far. Now we're going to do our foreground with grads. Click up here, pull that. I'm going to pull the shadows back a little bit, and then we're going to add a little bit of blue and green to the foreground. Okay, so we've got a real contrast between top and bottom now, color wise. The top, we're also going to add a tiny bit more contrast just so it really tones that sky down, like so. You can see the histogram from the beginning as well. So the beginning histogram is quite flat here with a peak. What we've done, we've balanced the image more. So the histogram falls right up here, um, gives a really nice depth to the image. That bit of sensor dust is huge. Right on a cloud as well. Go on, see you later. There we go. So, I'm going to need some more there, I'm going to leave them. Um, the more dehazing, the more clarity, the more fine tuning you do, the more sensor dust and spots you're going to see on your lens. Um, back all the details, it's pulling back all the, all the colours. So, you're going to, like say, as we're editing this, you can probably see how long I actually spent clicking the last dot, making sure it all lined up purely because I was printing this one. It took absolute hours. <coughs> um, let's ignore it for now. It's just the big ones that annoy me because I catch my eye too quick. Um, <coughs> so once we've got these loaded, uh, these colours loaded in nice, so your colours in your sky are nice and your foreground starting to look a lot better. What we're going to do is I'm going to go for a little bit of dodging and burning. So with dodging and burning, what you're going to do is use your brush tool. So you're going to select your brush. We're going to have the exposure up by one stop. And what we're going to do is this, we're going to highlight the white areas. So as you can see here, we've got a lot of white areas that could do with really popping. So we're going to come through, get by right there. And we're going to paint. You don't have to do this. Lightroom, you can do this in Photoshop, which I tend to do a little bit more when it's for print. But we're going to really feather this down, size nice and small, and we're just going to paint through the whites. What we're doing is we're making the whites pop a little bit compared to the darks. Like I say, you can really fine tune this, you can hone in, you can take as long as you want trying to get these whites looking dead right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab another brush, so click and click again. And this one is going to be down around 50, somewhere around there. And we're going to burn back these dark areas. Okay. And then what that's doing is that's really pulled some contrast into that foreground for you with lights and darks. <coughs> so there you can see what we've done now is we've added light and dark areas down through the foreground in a quick, easy step. Um, your corners here, so we've got some more blacks here that need a little bit of adjusting. So we're just going to tone these down a tiny little bit to add a bit more mood to the image. Now the fun bit. When it comes to water like this, what I do is I use a brush and I select as much of that area as I can. Right, so, okay. We're not going to do any exposure on it, but we are going to up the clarity. And what this does is pulls quite a lot of depth into the image. So you can see there to there. Okay, we'll do it on the water here as well. So what looked like a very tiny adjustment actually pulls quite a bit into this. Um, when we come down to our noise reduction, we are Have a look at what we're doing here. You don't want to go too far. There's a bit of noise reduction, and then we are going to reshape in a little bit. Now the real fun bit. 
We're going to go to the panel. I haven't played with you guys on YouTube yet. HSL. <coughs> so with this, you can select a colour by doing that and dragging. So you can. That's with this. If you do saturation, click this, it will then just saturate that part of the picture. So the luminance, if we were to come to the blue, click, if you go up, down, you can see it changes quite dramatically. Yeah? So, this with saturation. I'm going to click our little tab so we can get our eyedropper. I'm going to select the blue, we're just going to pull the blues up. Not too much. The good thing about this is once you've done it, you can fine tune it here, it tells you what you've selected. Um, the green is here, I really like. So we'll click and watch the right hand side bar. You can see the greens and the yellows go up with my drag. So slowly we'll just pull in, I want that orange and that red. We'll just pull in a bit more brightness into all of those parts of the image. Like so. Um, if you do want to do a colour change, people don't realise how easy it is. If you click Q, click, we'll change the greens in the yellows now. So you can just, you know, people you might want to, but not on this sort of image. Um, but that gives you an idea of how you do that quite simply. So, next, what we're going to do, last step, I'm going to use a radial blur. I'm going to zoom out of this image quite a lot. Oh, wrong way. So I'm going to zoom out of this image quite a lot. I'm going to go 160. I'm going to drag a big old radial blur in here. So this is where our sun was coming from. I'm going to pull that across, invert. It's already invert the right way. Let's change. So what this no is. Right, so what we're going to do is we've really, really softened this up. So if we highlight the selection, you can see it's coming in here. Probably get away with coming in a bit steeper. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we're putting in where the lights come from. Now what we're going to do is up our exposure. And we're going to add some contrast. We're going to add a bit more of the orange into there. So it's more of the sunset colour that was coming in. And what we're going to do, because the sun's coming in from that direction, we're also going to use clarity and drop it down so it softens that part of the image a bit. Like that. And saturation. Don't want to go too far. this bit dead right, that's all. You don't want to go too far because you don't want the rainbow to look fake. Okay. So then all we've done here, we've just added a tiny bit, might have gone a little too far with it. But that gives you an idea of what you can do with the radial blur. It works extremely well for this sort of image. Um, when you've got your sun just out of frame, it gives you an idea of what you can uh, pull back sun-wise. You can really pull in the colours and make sure that everything looks correct through there. Right, so what I'm going to do now for a little bit of fun is I'm going to pull in the original, image, the original edit just so you guys can see it. Um, so this was the final edit of the image uh, that I created in 2016 ready for print. Um, it's going to look totally different to what we've done because I spent hours on this. But you can see I went for a real dark moody scene. Um, rather than brightening up. My style has changed a little bit. It does over the years. Your style will change and you will develop as a photographer. You will change the way you shoot. Um, and mine has. I mean, this for print needed to be a little bit darker through the top. So you can see if I now, what I would do Graduation filter, pull it down. Like so. We'll up the contrast, we'll up the dehaze, and you can see that's now pulled more of the colour that I had from a bit too far this time. But that's how you would get that extra, extra mood into the sky. It's taken forever to load. There's no 
plus one. Uh, there we go. For some reason, it's doing it when I'm on the developer tab. So that that was the original back in 2016, and that's the edit we've just done together. So, like I say, a little bit different, but you can see it's that's how you get those colours from a very very flat image right the way through to this. So that's that's from flat to to what we've got there in sort of 15 minutes or so we'll leave with real basic editing um, it's really annoying me that that's there from the library but not on developer it's just my uh, my process is slowing down a little bit shall we say so that's the edit and that was the original so if anyone ever tells you you haven't got the data there then just uh, this edit out and you can get yourself some really good images from very 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 flat images um, as I say, when I shot that, you could see it was going to come out really well, and that's how we've done it. That's how I've got the colours back and the edit back to where it should have been. Um, I hope you've all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, this is a very new channel. There's only 62 subscribers, which is actually more than I thought I'd get. But if you liked it, the next video has loaded up for you. Thanks for watching.